Hello, um, in this video, we will introduce some basic R data structures that are most frequently used in machine learning. And we will um, show you how to create those data structures and how to store values, elements inside those structures, and how can we retrieve those values from those structures. And we will introduce and demonstrate them one by one and using the R Studio. The first one we want to introduce is vectors. Vectors stores an ordered set of values called elements. And the elements stored in each one of vectors should be of the same type. There are like many types of vectors. But commonly used in machine learning, there are four different types. Integer, uh, which is the numbers without any decimals. And double is the numbers with decimals. And also characters are those text data, such as people's name, um, their uh, blood type. And also the fourth one is logical. Logical type only include two values, which is true or false. Uh, false. And noted that um, vectors, if you have like um, uh, characters such as people's name, and you only ha also have their such as their height, you won't store them in vectors. You cannot store them in the same vector because each vector should have the elements of the same type. So you can store them in two different vectors, like one character vector and one numeric vector. So let me demonstrate how you can create vectors and how um, you can retrieve the values from vectors. Now let me demonstrate how to create the vectors in RStudio and how to retrieve the values from vectors. So when you want to create a vector, the, the function we use is a C parentheses. And C stands for the combine, which means it will combine the elements that you input between the parentheses. So let me quote this. Imagine now we have three patients' information, their name, their body temperatures, and whether they have the flu. So we want to like store those three patients' information into vectors. Notice that the body temperatures are numbers and the names are characters, so we cannot save them into only one vector. We at least need three different vectors. So let me create those uh, three, vector, uh, three vectors. Well, uh, because of time limit, I just copied those three lines, three R commands from other documents. So look at the first one. Um, we use the C parentheses, and we include the three different patients' name inside this parentheses. And the, the patients' name are separate by a comma. And the next one is temperature. The temperature is numeric value, which, which means there are numbers. And also, they're divided, they're separated by the comma. And the third one is whether the patient has the flu. Notice that this is a logical type of vector, which means they only have two values, true or false. So if it's false, it means this patient doesn't have the flu. Otherwise, it is true. So we use this error, assign this combination of elements to a name, subject name, temperature, and flu status. Well, if you're interested in the type of the subject name or you're interested in the type of temperature, you can either use class or type of functions to retrieve their type information. So now let me run this first. So let me run the subject name first. So here you don't see any errors returning. So means this three names have been successfully saved as a subject name. And then let me run the temperature too and flu status. So uh, you can see also from here that those three variables has been successfully created under the environment. And I want to know the class, the type of subject name. 
So I put the subject name between the parentheses of class function, and then I run it. It will output that the the it is the character type. And next, I want to know the type of temperature. They have like one place decimal, so it should be double. Let let us run it. It output as double. Well, there are three things I want to mention about creating a vector. One thing is, if you are creating a character type of vector, um, so which means the the elements inside the parentheses are text. So one thing you should know is that you need to remember to put a double quotation between around the, the text you want to input. So the R will recognize them as characters. If they're not characters, you don't need this uh, double quotation sign. The next thing I want to mention is that the vector is a sequenced uh, ordered numbers and element or elements. So the body temperature of Zhang uh, Do is 89, uh, 98.1, and is he has the flu? Uh, it does he has the flu? The the answer is no because here is false. So they are like corresponding. Like they have the corresponding relations between them. The third thing I want to mention is that R is case sensitive. So um, when you type the R commands, remember to use the correct uh, lower sensitive or upper sensitive letters. For example, if I change this true to a lower case and then run it, it will return me as an error because this true cannot be recognized as an object. So let me change it back. Well, the next thing I want to demonstrate is how to retrieve the values of each element inside this, uh, inside each of the vectors. For example, I want to like know the body temperature of J Do, which is this second element of temperature vector, ninety eight point six. So how can I do that? Well, note that the vector is uh, ordered a sequence of elements, so we can retrieve them by using index. So this one is index one. This one is index 2, this one is index 3. So if I want to retrieve the second element of temperature, I will just type temperature with a square bracket. And in uh, between the square bracket, I will include the index number. So I'll input number 2. And then I run this. It will return me the second element of the body temperature of the patient, which is 98.6. Well, the next one is if I want to retrieve more than one element, for example, if I want to know the second patient's body temperature and the third, so I can use a colon between two and three, which means it will return both two and three. If you have, for example, if you have six elements, six type body temperatures, and you want you want uh you want the elements from two to six, you can change this six uh, change it three to six. So here, let me run this. Um, by adding this colon, you will like return both two and three by elements from the temperature. Um, vector. The next one is if I want to re uh, exclude the 98.6, I only want to output the first one and the third one. How can I do that? Well, you can use a combine function inside this bra uh, bracket. So it will like combine the number one element and number three element. It will output only this two, exclude the um, temperature number two. And there is another way to do so because you wanted to exclude atom number two, right? So you put a minus sign 
in front of these two. It means you you are you want to exclude the uh, the number two uh, the number two elements, and you run it. This two does the same thing. The next one is you can also use a vector to indicate whether you want to include them. So for example, I here I also use the combine function. Well, but inside this combine function, we put a logical elements. So I want the first element to output. I want the second element to output, but I don't want the third element to output. So it will only output you two elements, the first and the second. The second data structure we want to introduce is factor. Before we want to introduce the factor, we need to know what are the nominal values and what are the nominal variables. Well, first of all, to be a nominal value, a variable, you have to be characters. And second of all, you has to have values, um, also the categories of values. For example, gender can be a good example of nominal variable. Gender has only two categories, female and male. So a person's gender could only, its value could only be, gen, uh, could only be female or male. Another example can be the university program. So it can be three levels and three categories. For example, undergrad program, master program, and PhD program. And if you store a character vector as a factor, you just tell R that the values stored in this vector is R nominal values. So why not just use the character vectors in that instead of factors? Well, for one thing, when you store the values as factors, for example, you store a uh, gender as a factor. So R will probably give female the number zero and the male number one. But if you store them as character vectors, you will store them as just characters, female, male, female, male, and it will take a lot of space than just integers. And if you're um, trying to use a factor, you need to like indicating the levels of each factor. For example, um, for the gender, they have two values, so you have to indicate that. The next thing we want to mention is ordinal values. Factors can also represent ordinal values. Ordinal values is similar to nominal values, but it has certain a certain order um, for their values. For example, when you order something from a restaurant, well, they may ask you the spicy level, spicy level of your meal. It may give some options such as no spicy, mild, medium, spicy, or crazy spicy. So, um, between each levels, it is certainly has some differences. Well, R will treat those different, uh, treat the ordinal values differently with a sequence, but it will treat nominal values equally. So next, we will demonstrate how to create the factors in R Studio and how to like retrieve the values from factors. Well, we will demonstrate how we can create the factors in R Studio. Well, for the time limit sake, um, I already have those arguments here available. I, I, I'm gonna like go through it and run it, run them one by one. So here, in order to like transform a vector into a factor, we will use the function factor parentheses, and inside inside this parentheses will include the vector we want to transform. So we now I want we want to like include more information for the three patients. So we want to like add the, the gender information. So the gender can be a good example of factor. So it, it only has two values, male and a male, a female and male. So those three people, we do not need the levels here because it already has both male and female. So let us run this one. 
So it has successfully been created as gender. And let's call the gender. So it will output the values male, female, and male. And the level see here is female and male. Next, we want to add the blood type factor to patient's information. Well, pa a patient's blood type can be select from these three values. But we only have three patients, so we only have three different blood types. But we need to list the available blood type here. And so we introduce the levels equals to to indicating the actual available levels of blood type. So let us run this one. And let's call the blood type. So it will show you that there are four different types of blood types. And this patient, this three patient has three different blood types. And next one is adding an order factor. This is what we have uh, mentioned about how, how to represent the ordinal uh, values. So here, we want to add the illness sim symptom to patient's information. So here we have three levels of severeness of illness. The first one is mild, and then moderate, and then severe. So the mild is less severe than moderate, and moderate is less severe than severe. So we will add um, ordered equals to true to indicate there is a sequence, there's an order between these two uh, three levels. So let us run this, run this one. Um, and then we will call the symptoms. So it will show you here that levels has orders. So the mild is less than moderate and it's less than severe. And when we want to know the symptom that is greater than moderate, we use symptoms larger than moderate to show the severeness. Next data structure we're going to introduce is list. List is similar to vectors we just introduced. It is also an ordered set of elements. But for vectors, the for one vectors, for one vector, the elements inside one vector should have the same type, either it be character or it numbers. But in one list, it it can has various types of elements. We will demonstrate how to create a list and how to retrieve elements from a list. Well, uh, we have created like mm, the patient's information before, like such as the name, the body temperature, the flu status, the gender, blood type, and the symptoms. So now I want to create a list mm, containing the patient number one's information. So I will use list parentheses functions to create a list. I Inside this parentheses, I just enter all the elements of patient number one. For example, patient number one is Zhang Dou, right? So I only include Zhang Dou and Zhang Dou's temperature and Zhang Dou's gender and everything inside this list. And I give each element a name. For example, I give this Zhang Dou a title called full name and temperature and so on and so forth. And I give this list a name, subject one. So let us run this subject one and display the information of patient number one. So here it will show the, the patient's information such as the name, temperature, and so on and so forth. It only display the patient number one because we only include the patient number one's information in this list. Well, next, we want to retrieve the elements, the, the blood type or name or anything from this list. Well, remember that the list is also an ordered set of elements. So 
we can also retrieve them using index number. So full name is in the uh, index number one, temperature two, so on and so forth. Symptom is number one, two, three, four, six. So if I want to retrieve the temperature of Zhang Do, I will I can use subject and remember this square bracket and include the index number two. So it will return me the temperature of Zhang Do. It also returns me the name, uh, the title of the temperature, which is temperature. Well, if I only want the numeric value, only want this 98.1 to show up, I use double bracket. It only give me the number, the, 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 the actual temperature. Well, because we give the titles for each element. We can use the title to code the, uh, to return the values. So here we use a dollar sign. So this is subject one, right? It is a list. And then we use a dollar sign together with the element name and then run it. It will also return temperature. So these two approaches are the same. Well, next one, if I want to return, like display more than one element of patient one. So I want both the temperature and the flu status to show up in the console window. And here we will use the C combine method to combine those two elements together. So similarly, let us run this. It will give me the temperature and also the flu status. Well, we can also use the colon. Remember the colon can also combine two values together, two, two elements together. So we use this list and to combine the column two and three. It also give me the temperature and the flu status. Well, next, we will introduce another data structure called the data frames. Data frames are the most important R data structure that utilized in machine learning. And it is analogous to a spreadsheet or database. Basically, it creates some kind of like a table. It, can, it has different rows and different columns. And those columns can be different types. So the, for different columns, it can include like names, which is character, and ages, which is numbers. So for like, if I want to create a data frames for those three patients, well, each row can be a can be the record for one patient, and each column can be the different features we just included, such as name blood type, and temperature, so on and so forth. Here we will demonstrate you how can we create a data structure in our studio. Well, if you want to create a data structure, we will use data dot free and the parentheses and include all the vectors you want to, to include for this data structure. Remember, recall that we create six different um, vectors and factors for the patient's information. And this subject name, of course, includes three names and temperature, three body temperature, and so on and so forth. Well, noted here, we have a new parameter called strings as factors. Notice that the as A here is capital. Make sure you type it right when you do your own assignment. So why we need the strings as factors equals to false? Because if we do not have this parameter, the R will automatically, by default, treat any character vectors, vectors as factors. But we all know that subject name cannot be a factor. So by using this strings as factors equal to false, uh, R will treat subject name as a character vector. 
Well, let's do this. Let's run this. Let's build a data structure and call this structure PT data, which is patient's information data. And then let's display the data frame. So basically, you have created a table, looks like a table. It has six different columns. Each column represents some features of the patient's information, such as name, temperature, and so on and so forth. And you have three rows. Each row is, is the record of one patient. So, oh, you also notice that, like, each column has a name, a title, a column title. This title is a vector name you input here. Next, we want to like want to know how can we retrieve those like values from this data frame. Well, you know that you notice that because like each column has their own title, has their own name. So we can just use the column name to retrieve one columns of records. For example, I will use, this is the data frame name, and this is the column name, and I will combine this two using this dollar sign, which means I will retrieve only this column from this data frame. So let me run this. Well, it only output the subject name, those three names. And if I want to output like more than one columns, I can use this combine function to combine like more than like one name and two names. So it will output the column two and column three. Let's run this. So it looks like another small like subtable only include this part. Well, next, well, because it is a table, the records are also like ordered and sequenced, so we can also use the index number. So if we have an index number inside this, only one index number inside this parentheses, uh, inside the graph uh, bracket, means this one is a column index. So this one will output the column number two, which is the temperature. And if we want to output more than one column, remember we can always use this colon sign and combine this column two and column three, which is also the temperature and the flu status. So if you see two index number inside this bracket and it is separate by a comma, it is no longer only in the column index anymore. So the number before this comma is the row index, and the, the, the one after this comma is the column index number. So here, it serves as a ordinate to locate the element you want to output. So here, we, we want to output the element, the value, um, on the first row and on the second column. So let's see from the table. So first row, second column. So this <clears throat> uh, this will output the 98.1. So let's see if it can output 98. Yeah, it is. It will output the first patient's body temperature. And if we uh, we want to output several rows and several columns. We can also use this combine function to combine those two row index and combine those two uh, column index. And the output values are the uh, over overlapping values those um, those rows and columns. So let's see. So it will output the first and third patient's temperature, body temperature and the gender. Well, another way to output a column is to leave them blank. So if you leave a row blank, for example here, uh, if you leave the row blank, well, only type the index for column index, it will output the column one with all the rows. And this one, if you only, uh, have the row indexed with with, uh, with no column index, it would output the row one with all columns. And for the last one, if you 
um, don't have either like column index or nor the column index will output all the columns and all the rows. So here, let's see. So it is the all rows from column one. This is all columns from row one. This is everything that in this data frame. Well, the last part is telling you that you can uh, like mix the index number and also the column titles. So instead of using the index number, I just replace num the index number with the column title. It will work uh, the serve, serve, serve the same purpose. And here, recall that we used to use um, a minus sign in front of index number so as to include ex exclude that columns or that rows. So for example here, I use minus two to exclude the second row. And here I exclude uh, the, first, uh, the first, third, fifth, and sixth columns. So these two also um, serve the same purposes. Now the last data, free, uh, data structure we want to introduce are matrix and arrays. Matrix is a data structure that represents a two-dimensional table with also with rows and columns of data. This one is similar to the data frames, but what is different is uh, matrix can only contain same type of data, which means the elements inside of one matrix can only be either numbers or other types of um, other types such as characters or logical. But most often, matrix is used for mathematical operations. So typically, it, they will store only the numeric data into a matrix. And matrix is also column ma major order, which we will discuss later. The last one is array. Array is a multidimensional table of data. And it can have more than two dimensions. So it can have rows, columns, and more layers of value, values. But the arrays is beyond the scope of our class. So we do not discuss arrays here. Uh, finally, we will introduce you how to create your own matrix in our studio. Well, our, um, we usually use matrix with parentheses as a function to create matrix. Well, if you have any questions about, about the functions, about any methods, just using the question mark and with together with the function name, it will show here under the hop center the detailed parameters and applications and circumstances you could use for creating this function. So now let's look at some of the parameters for this matrix function. So first of all, the first parameter is data that the numbers you want to include in this matrix. And the default uh, number of rows and number of columns are all equals to one. And the default by row is equals to false. So that's why I said the matrix is column um, column major. So it will first satisfy the column and then the rows. And this then names are the columns and also the uh, row names. And the default number is num. So you, by default, you don't have any titles for the rows or columns. So now let's look at some of the examples of creating matrix. So here, uh, we you can manually type in those numbers if it's a small matrix. So here, I typed four different numbers, and I said the number of rows is two. So you can calculate that. So four numbers, columns, uh, rows, are the number of rows are two. So it is two by two matrix. Two rows, two columns. So let's run this. And let's see what the matrix looks like. OK, so see, um, see it is column major because it will first fill 1, 2 
on the first column and then 3, 4 on the second column. And that's how it works. But if you want to change it, the by row to 2 here, it will be a um, row measured um, function. So the next is the same thing. Just change the row number to column number. So four numbers still two column is still a two by two matrix. So you can see here. So I'm still the same matrix. Well, if I want to create a two by three matrix, I will include six numbers in this matrix. The first parameter is of course the data. Data, remember that the data should be a vector, so need to use this combine function to combine those six numbers. And then you can either, either use the row number or the column number to indicating the number of rows or the number of columns. So the matrix knows what is, uh, what is matrix look like. So let's see, here is a 2 by 3 matrix, which means we have 2 rows and 3 columns. 2 row, 3 columns. And here is the 3 by 2 matrix. Three row, two columns. Similar to the data frame, um, matrix can only use a column and the row index to retrieve the values from the matrix. For for example, this one comma one uh, serve as an ordinate to locate the first num uh, the, the number on the first row also on the first column. So here, let's run this. It should be number one. And this one is third column. Um, the second, uh, the third, uh, sorry, third row, second column. So it should be six. Well, similarly, you can keep like keep the column index blank and also only use the row index so it will output the first row uh, with two column this will extract the first column with all rows first column with all rows so uh, that's Basically, that's all for the data structure tutorial. Thank you for your listening. Thank you for your time. Bye.